Thank you so much. All right, welcome everybody. Um, so yes, I am a registered dietitian. So what that means is that I spend my days talking about food, writing about food, shopping for, cooking for, um, taking pictures of food, uh, all in hopes of helping people understand that uh, food can taste great and be great for you. So those two can go hand in hand. Uh, currently, one of my jobs, I'm also a registered dietitian at Hannaford Supermarket. Um, and so there I do store tours. Um, I have recipes that I display every week. So there's lots of uh, ways people can learn about healthy eating there as well. So today, our focus is mason jar meals. So the cool thing about mason jar meals, and if you don't have a mason jar, you can use other stuff. But I happen to have a mason jar. Um, and I also have a little pampered chef mason jar sort of ish um, container for meals. So the idea is just you need something to put a meal in, you screw the lid on and it, it keeps it airtight. And that's really the trick because with the mason jar meal, um, ideally these, and typically, I mean, they're sort of salads basically. Um, the idea is you want to keep, obviously you want to keep the food fresh, but you want to make sure that the lettuces stay crisp, whatever stays crispy or is crispy stays crispy um, and things retain their flavor and they don't go bad. And that's why we want to put them in a mason jar because the mason jar, again, which is screw lid, uh, really does a great job of being airtight and keeping it that way. Uh, but first of all, a couple of just tricks. So I'm going to make two mason jar salads today. One is a chopped black bean and corn mason jar salad, and one is a spring berry mason jar salad. So very, very different. Um, only one ingredient the same in these whole two salads. Or, yeah, and that's the lettuce part. Um, but a couple of tricks when it comes to mason jar salads, because you can, and I will mention things, ideas as I'm going along of substitutions, but really you can put whatever the heck you want in here. Um, just a couple of rules with mason jar salads is the dressing always goes on the bottom. And then of course, once you make it, you wanna make sure it is stored upright and you transport it upright because our salad or our greens, our lettuce is going to be at the top. And as long as it's airtight and the dressing doesn't touch the greens, they'll stay nice and crispy. So you wanna make sure you don't just grab it out of the fridge and throw it in your bag or you know get it tossed around because it sort of defeats the purpose of keeping it all uh, crispy and separated. So those are the two main rules, dressing on the bottom, greens on the top. Um, and then we sort of work our way up to, you know, next to the dressing, we want to keep the things that it's okay if they absorb some dressing, maybe it'll give them a little bit more flavor uh, and that's fine. Um, what? That's basically it. These things will keep roughly five days. Um, I have kept them longer in the refrigerator and they've been fine, but I usually recommend, you know, try not to go more than five days. So the idea is you could make five mason jar salads on like a Sunday and pop them in the fridge and every morning on your way to work, grab one out and you've got a salad uh, to go. Another cool thing about them is, uh, Helen and I were just talking, it's really not any more difficult or time consuming to make two, three, four, five salads. Um, it's not harder to make five salads or more time consuming as it is to make one. You just chop a little bit more. Today, I'm only going to be making one of each. Um, but I mean, you could literally have five jars lined up and okay, let me dump this in, this in, this in, and very, very quickly have a week's worth of meals. Even if you don't want to eat the same thing every day, um, you can vary things up. And I, some of the examples I'll be saying as I'm going along, you'll see how you can make five salads that have, you know, some unique twists to them. So you are eating something slightly different each day and it makes it more fun. Uh, so like I said, the jars I'm going to be using today, uh, I do have a mason jar and this is, I meant to check, this is a, I think this is a 32 ounce, so 24 ounces right here. So I think it's actually a 32 ounce jar. Uh, this is roughly the same size. You don't want to fill them to the tip top shoved in tight 
because one of the things with mason jar meals is you want to be able to shake them before you eat them. If possible, you want to make sure that that dressing on the bottom gets all spread around and you, you know, you're not eating them layer by layer, you're eating a combined salad. So you want to have some, some shake room. Um, and you know, these could make large salads. If you're a smaller eater, get a smaller jar, get a 16 ounce jar. Or if the salad is going to be a side salad with something else, um, yeah, a, an eight, eight ounce would be pretty small, but a 16 ounce jar would be perfect. So we are gonna start, we will start with our berry salad. And the cool thing about this um, Pampered Chef one, and no, I don't sell Pampered Chef, I just bought this from them. The lid comes apart and I'm gonna be putting some nuts in here and this helps the nuts stay a little crunchy. You could totally put the nuts in here and it's not the end of the world. All right, so like I said, we wanna start with our dressing. So this, and I'm going to tell you everything I put in here and the amounts, but uh, you will be emailed the recipes afterwards so you don't have to worry about writing everything down. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we want two tablespoons. This is a balsamic vinaigrette. You could use raspberry vinaigrette. Um, I recently, uh, made a blueberry vinaigrette, which was really delicious and I think would go well in here. Um, sorry, my balsamic was a little, a little thick this time. But it's yummies. All right. Uh, and that's, this is one of those areas where, you know, you can change things around. You can just for personal preference or you can change things, you know, each day. Maybe you have a different dressing each day of the week and that works. So first there's our nice yummy, yummy, yummy. So like I said, that was two tablespoons of dressing we put in there, step one. Our next ingredient is going to be some chicken. Now, if you have, running out of counter space. If you have leftover chicken, you could totally use leftover chicken. This could be deli chicken, this could be turkey, uh, this could be tofu, this could be, and I know I, I thought I sliced it open, but I didn't. Um, it could be whatever kind of protein you like. Um, I'm using beans in the other one. This could be beans. If you're not a meat eater, this would be delicious with like a white bean. Uh, but basically we want roughly uh, two and a half ounces of skinless chicken. I happen to love, if I don't have leftover chicken or rotisserie chicken, I love these, um, Purdue makes them as well, these little shortcut chicken strips, uh, because I can just sort of take as many out as I need. And that's roughly about, say, that's about two and a half ounces. And I, this is a personal preference. I like to chop my things more bite sized When I eat this salad, I don't want to have, you know, one fork full of meat and one fork full of, of green. I sort of want it all to be able to be combined. So I sort of give it a rough chop. And like she said, I have the chat open. So if you guys have comments or questions, uh, feel free to pop them in the chat. And if I can answer them I, at the time, I will, but we can have time at the end as well. So, so this is the reason we can put our chicken in. It would be delicious if our chicken absorbed some of this dressing, but it's not one of those ingredients. Uh, it's not like putting say a pasta or a rice in first, which would really soak up all the dressing and then we wouldn't have any dressing left. So I would not put a pasta or a rice in next but the protein source is great. So two and a half ounces of chicken, like I said, could be leftover, could be deli, could be rotisserie, could be the, the shortcuts, could be white beans, could be turkey. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Those are the only ones I can think of right now. Um, these are going to last, I would say f about five days in the refrigerator. Um, like I said, I've, I've had them last longer, but I would say they're at their peak at about five days. So I wouldn't go, I, I personally wouldn't recommend going longer than that. If you do and it's fine, that works. Um, so I am not, I don't have any leftover pasta today. 
But if you happen to have some leftover, say orzo or ditalini, like a real tiny pasta, you could put a couple tablespoons of the cooked pasta at this point on top of the chicken, and that would be good. Uh, our next ingredient is just going to be roughly, so this, this say so that was half, roughly a quarter of a cucumber. And I did, I did not have the English cucumbers today, so I'm just going to, to peel this. And you're gonna wanna chop up your cucumber. You could leave the peel on if you'd like. I'm just not a, a huge fan of biting into the, the peel. And then again, I'm gonna make this sort of bite size for me. Well, maybe, maybe it's not bite size as much as it's, you know, fork size. So first I cut slices. So I have four even slices. And I'm going to make, this is how I chop anything to make sim similar sizes. Slice it one way, lay it down, slice it the other way. All roughly the same thickness. Then I turn it and I do my final cut. And now I have perfectly, almost perfectly cubed cucumber. So that is going in next. And you could really, I mean, throw pretty much whatever you like in here. You want the flavors. This one is our spring berry salad. So we wanna think about what would go well with spring berries. All right, next we're gonna do some baby carrots or shredded carrots that we're gonna, I'm gonna chop up again. Um, I personally am not a fan of uh, the pre-bought shredded carrots. If you like those, those would be perfect in here. You want about two tablespoons of them. Uh, for me, they're always just a little bit too hard. Um, you could also just take one carrot, shred it up and that would work fine. Um, I just sort of, today I thought I would chop up some baby. So it's about two tablespoons of carrots. It was the quarter cup of the cucumber. And again, I just like to, I think this goes back to my days of you know feeding my kids when they were much younger baby carrots, I always was afraid in their salads, they would choke on them, these little round balls. So I would always slice them in half first and then cut them. So nobody ever got a round piece that could stick easier in their throat. And I just chop it up. That's roughly, that's roughly two tablespoons. And this is all, you know, I'm giving you amounts, but it's really, you know, this is really something we can eyeball. Get carrots in. Now is when it's starting to get, get some pretty colors. And that's fun too. These are so, so fun to look at. I mean, already we have, four different colors and it just looks looks real nice. And the thing about colors when it comes to our food is in many cases, especially with these plant-based foods, color is associated with nutrients. So you, you, know, you may have heard the expression, eat a rainbow. And that's because the more colors you get in, the more nutrients you're gonna get. So the orange that makes carrots orange is associated with vitamin A, and that's very um, beneficial to your eyes. And the blue that's in these, these blueberries we're gonna use in a minute. These are associated with uh, these sort of phytonutrients they're called that are beneficial to brain health. And the greens that are in um, spinach and dark leafy greens and broccoli, those are associated with being protective against certain cancers. So if you love carrots and you eat carrots every day, that's fantastic. You're getting all of your, your oranges, you're getting all your, your orange nutrients. But if you're eating carrots to the exclusion of the reds and the greens and the purples and the yellows, then you're missing out on a bunch of other nutrients. So you wanna make sure that 
you choose foods from a variety of food groups, but even within each food group, you make sure you're getting a variety, and especially when it comes to these plant foods, a variety of colors. Um, and it's just, you get more nutrients, it looks better. Anything that is more appealing visually, food-wise, um, doesn't always taste better, but it does help it taste better. It helps it be more interesting and um, enjoyable when it looks good. All right, so that was our carrots. They can be shredded or chopped. Next step is those pretty blueberries. It's about a third of a cup of blueberries. So again, we're getting, so now we've got green cucumber, we've got orange carrots, we've got blue or purple, whatever you wanna call them, blueberries. So we've got our pretty little three layer salad here. Next are some beautiful strawberries. I picked these up yesterday roughly a third of a cup of strawberries. And again, just like I did for the other ingredients, I want these to be bite-sized. I don't want um, to dig into my salad and have just a huge piece of strawberry and nothing else. I'm gonna cut my strawberries into little pieces. Um, if you, I said, you know, the idea with these is, you know, you shake them up and then you eat them. You can also dump them into a bowl if you, you know, if you are at home and you have a bowl or if you, because even though I'm talking about, you know, bringing it to work, there's nothing saying you can't do all the work on the weekend just to make your, your lunches at home easier and healthier. So you could do this if you're staying home, dump it into a bowl, your mixing might be a little easier that way. Or if you work somewhere where, you know, you have a little kitchen and you can bring a bowl and and wash things out, that's always nice too. But you can certainly eat right out of the jar. And that's a fun thing too, because if you are at work, now you can just put the lid back on and you don't have to worry about, you know, anything getting anywhere, dressing or leaking or anything like that. I work from home, but still prep a week's worth of salads in advance. It does, it makes it that much easier. And honestly, I feel like Whatever work you can do in advance, whether you're going to work or working from home, you're more likely to eat nutritiously because you don't have to, um, you know, think about what am I going to eat? Oh, I'll just grab a sandwich or I'll grab this or I don't know. I don't feel like cooking, so I don't eat anything. If something's already made and ready to go, much easier to eat nutritiously that way. Yes, it does avoid, avoid Zeta just grazing and grabbing whatever you can find. All right. Okay, so these strawberries, we're gonna pop our strawberries in. I've never tried this, um, but if you're not a fan of either blueberries or strawberries, uh, I think it would be fine. You could do some raspberries in here for one of the berries. Oops, we lost one. Strawberry overboard. So now we've got this, I mean, so pretty. I mean, it looks like one of those, you know, like posters in a grocery store. It's so colorful. All right, so we've got our strawberries. Um, I like to put a little bit of feta cheese in. If you don't like feta, you can leave it out. Uh, you could use goat cheese if you liked goat cheese. Um, I think maybe a, um, like a mild mozzarella or Monterey Jack could go in here as well, but I happen to like feta, so I'm going to do feta and about two tablespoons. Adds a nice little salty creaminess. And we are almost done salad number one. Uh, the last thing is our green. So today I have, my glare is too much. Um, today I have a, just a leafy green romaine, but you could do baby spinach, you could do kale, you could do iceberg, you can do whatever um, leaf, and you could use a combination, um, whatever kind you like. And so roughly we want about one or two cups of this. I just sort of put in 
enough to, to fill up that top area. But remember, I'm not packing it tight. But I wanted, you know, this is my salad, so I want to make sure there's enough greens in there. But so that's that's probably what I'm going to put. So this stuff's all pretty packed tight because it's heavy. This is nice and light, and I think that's going to work um, nicely. So that was probably, I'd say that was a little over a cup of lettuce that I put in there. And then we want two tablespoons of slivered almonds. Um, don't like slivered almonds, leave them out, swap them for peanuts, swap them for pecans, swap them for walnuts, whatever you wanna do. Like I said, totally can put them in here. Um, however, the moisture from the other produce will make them uh, a little softer. Nutritionally, or nutritiously um, speaking, they're fine. They're just gonna be a little soft. So anyway, so that's our salad. We've got a question, which type of lettuce is the most nutritious? So when it comes to lettuce, the, the darker the color, like I was talking about color, darker the color, the more nutrients. Um, so like a romaine, romaine is going to be good. That's why the spinach is so good, baby spinach. Um, I personally like iceberg lettuce. And of all the lettuces, it's probably the least nutrient dense, uh, but it's very full of water. It's, it's mostly water. Um, so that's a benefit in itself because it's a great uh, option to be part of your day's hydration is to get the, um, the water from that lettuce. So it has its benefits. It just doesn't have nutri you know, nutrients per se. It just has more water. And I also think of um, you know, somebody who maybe likes iceberg but doesn't like the other lettuces. It's sort of a vehicle to get all these other foods in your meal. So it's fine. Uh, oh, mandarin oranges would be great in here. Yes, I would make sure I would sort of drain them and maybe blot them just a wee bit so they don't make things, um, you know, although they should sink down, so that should be fine. But you just don't want them too juicy. Yeah, mandarin oranges would be a great addition here, a great combination or, you know, swap for the blueberries or the strawberries. So that is meal number one. My daughter is very excited. She'll be taking this to school on Monday. And now we will get to, so does anybody, before I actually go on, anybody have any questions specifically about, or comments about that berry salad, mixed spring berry salad, because now we're going to move on. Um, fresh orange segments would be great. I wonder too, so in the next salad, I'm going to use some peaches. I bet plums, diced up plums or peaches would be good in here. I mean, it's pretty basic. It's I feel like like a plain chicken or a white bean um, with some cucumbers and carrots and the green it doesn't have a ton of uh, crazy strong flavors. So I think whatever fruit you want to put in here, you could. Apples would be good. So yes, you wait and you shake it. So now we carefully put this in the refrigerator. We carefully put it in our backpack, on our lunch bag, whatever it is. Once we get ready to eat it, we shake, shake, shake or jump it in a bowl, whatever. Um, I personally, what I do when I shake it is first I sort of hold it upside down and let that dressing drizzle down a bit. And then I, I sort of shake it upside down um, just because I really want to make sure I don't want my dry greens and my, you know, everything really stopping with dressing down here. So I tend to do it that way. But for storage purposes, yeah, this is what we're doing. All right. So that's that one. Oh, pears. Somebody said apples. Pears could go in here. So, so many, so many different things. The, I mean, I wouldn't do bananas, um, but honestly, I can't really think, aside from bananas, I can't really think of, maybe kiwi might not go, I don't know, kiwi might go, um, you know, and it's, you know, get creative, and so like I was saying, you could make five of these, so you have five different dressings, or just a couple different dressings, put the same or different protein in each one, the idea of, you know, you're doing all the chopping, pick and choose what bowl gets what and add some variety. And it's, you know, maybe it takes you 10 minutes longer to make five meals instead of just one at a time. So ironically, you should mention avocado not going in here. I am going to put an avocado in my next salad. So um, I will show you how we do that. But yeah, the ones with the avocado, don't know I'd go five days on that one. Um, I mean, nutritionally, it's fine. It just will get a little bit brown, but I've got a little bit of a trick. 
So now we're going to make our chopped black bean and corn mason jar salad. Uh, keeping cold, so yeah, you definitely do want to keep it cold. So if you have a refrigerator at work, uh, great. If you don't, you know, my kids go to school with ice packs in there. They've insulated lunch bags and ice packs. Um, so that, that works fine. Just make sure they put the ice pack in the insulated bag with the mason jar salad. So next salad, corn and black bean. So I'm going to start with some red onion. Um, and I learned a little trick. So I don't really like to chop into or bite into like a hunk of raw onion. Um, it's just recently that I've started even eating them. Um, but a trick that I learned from my mother-in-law is chop them up, put them in some cold water and let them soak for a little bit. And some of that harshness sort of goes away. So I'm going to start chopping my onion just to get that step started. And I will tell you the ingredient or the menu, sorry, recipe you're going to get for the black bean and corn salad is going to be for five salads. Uh, I'm going to make one today. So I'll sort of tell you the five amounts uh, and you can sort of watch and I'll talk about what I'm going to put in here to make one salad. So for five salads, um, we want roughly one, you know, smallish red onion chopped. So I'm just going to do a little bit of an onion. And so I'm going to do it the same way, but much smaller with my onions. I like them small because I don't want to bite into a big one at all. I actually don't want to bite into an onion at all. Okay. But this is totally up to you. You're making this for you. You chop it as large or as small as you like. And I think I have just enough onion to start me crying in a minute. So excuse that. All right, so we've got nice little bits of onion. Never chop them too small as far as I'm concerned. All right, and I've got a bowl of water here, so I'm gonna dump those in here. And to tell you the truth, I probably won't even use all that onion. That's too much for me to eat. Um, all right, so that's step one. Now we're gonna go back to our jar. And what goes on the bottom are dressings. So the full recipe, you need about one and a quarter cups of salsa, whatever kind of salsa you like, spicy, mild, black bean, corn, habanero, whatever it is you like. Uh, and for one recipe, we are going to be making uh, about a quarter cup of salsa. This is a, a just a mild, and if you make homemade salsa, you could totally use homemade salsa. It's going in there. And some yogurt. So we're making, it's a plain Greek yogurt. So we're making just sort of a salsa creamy yogurt dressing. For the full recipe, you want one of these full, um, you know, five and a half, six ounce containers. For this small bit, we're gonna have about, about one and a half tablespoons. So this, this one, unless if you have a big container of yogurt, um, you won't have this little guy left over, uh, but that'll go perfect in a smoothie. And I sorta, you don't have to, but I like to, Stir it around a little. Of course, now I made my salad jar all yucky. But get it a little bit. Again, when we shake it, it'll mix in. All right, so that is, um, we've gotten our dressing ready. So the next thing we're gonna do, so this is one of those steps where you can get some variety in. So you can either use, oh, and again, you could be making five different salads and make them five different ways. So you can use, get a quart of grape tomatoes um, and sort of either leave those whole or maybe cut them in half. You could use a mango that you diced. Uh, I am not a huge raw tomato fan and I could not find mangoes at the store yesterday, but I could find peaches. So uh, I'm going to use a peach. So I've already washed it. There we go. 
Oh, and this is, a, I forgot, this is a white blush punch. I love those. And I'm not, because I washed it, I'm not um, gonna worry about peeling it. Um, if you don't like the peel of a peach, obviously you can, you could peel it. Or like I said, use the mango, use whatever, whatever you like. And same as my last salad, I want little bite-sized pieces so that we get a bite with everything. I'm gonna do with my, okay. Lost my pit for a minute. So we'll make all my slices. These peaches, I'm used to seeing big giant peaches, but this was the first time I saw them in the store and they were itty bitty ones, but that's okay. Okay, so put our peach in there. Like I said, remember this can be a cherry tomatoes, this can be grape tomatoes, this can be mango, and today it is. I, I mean, the orange peaches would be fine. I almost think the orange peaches would be better for this. I just, when I was in the store, I saw the white ones and I got excited and I didn't think about what I was doing with it. So I think the traditional peaches are, would be a little bit better, just not quite as sweet, but whatever. This is what we got today. So now we are going to take um, our onion. I want to do that next. You know what I'm going to do next? I'll do the onion. So if I were at the sink, I would just drain this onion. But I'm just going to take, I got a little fork here so that I can not take the water with me. And we're just going to put a little layer of onion. We're going to spread it all around. I love the flavor of onion. I just have never liked eating onion. So that's our onion. And our next ingredient is avocado. So this is what somebody had mentioned. Oh, we don't want to do the avocado in these. And yeah, because it's going to brown, right? So we got a couple things going for us. And I am not at all guaranteeing this is not going to brown. But it will be airtight. And um, I was reading an article once. It was one of those, I think it was Cook's Illustrated. I can't remember. Oops. Um, where they, you know, did five different things to test out what makes the av avocado brown the least. And they said, if it is packed with onion. So, come on, I cut that terribly. There we go. Um, so that's why I put the, uh, the onion in first. So I want the onion. And the full recipe is going to call for two avocados, peeled and chopped, divided. So we're roughly... I mean, we want a little bit, a little bit less than a half of an onion. I'm um, sorry, of an avocado. So I do the same thing. I sort of, I just do my dicing right in here. I just go all different ways back and forth. I don't want where that pit was, so I'm gonna cut it off. And now I can just sort of scoop this in and it's all broken in those little pieces. So I find this is just a less messy way because now I didn't get any of the avocado on me, but it's all chopped up in little pieces. There we go. So now here's what we've got so far. Not, it's still pretty, but I messed it up with my, my zhuzhing of my dressing, but we've got some colors going on in there. So avocado is great, great way to get some healthy fats. Um, in there, beneficial for heart health, beneficial for um, production of hormones in your body and, and the absorption of vitamins. So the healthy fats are really, really crucial. We next want, and I already did the draining, this is just a can of low sodium black beans. Um, if you don't like black beans, so technically the, the full recipe calls for two cans of black beans. Uh, I rinse and drain them. I get the low sodium. And then I still rinse them and drain them just to cut the sodium. We don't need the, the extra salt in there. So we want two cans. So we're roughly putting just under half a can of black beans 
in each one. And again, you could use pinto beans, you could use white beans, you could use kidney beans, uh, whatever kinds of beans you want. And I know this is roughly half a can that I have here. Make a nice little layer of beans. So this is a great plant-based protein. So when it comes to salads, so salads are super, new, I, depends on what you put in it, obviously. Uh, great way to get your fiber, great way to get your vitamins and your minerals. But if your salad is all vegetable, then you run the risk of being hungry shortly after eating it because vegetables tend to be, you know, without the protein and without too much fat, uh, they tend to be digested and absorbed very quickly. So you're hungry shortly after. So it's always a good idea when you're having a salad, make sure there's some protein in it. Protein takes longer to digest, longer to absorb, and you'll feel fuller much longer. So protein could be animal uh, or it could be plant. So it could be any meat. It could be tuna. It could be beans. It could be eggs. Um, lots of different ways to get some protein in your salads. So now we have, now it's looking a little bit prettier. Uh, next thing is we want two cans of corn, uh, two of the 15 ounce cans of corn. And that was the, you know, the 15 ounce can of beans. Uh, again, we, we drained the corn and I just did the opening and the draining earlier. So now it's really getting pretty. And it's funny, I mean, two totally different colors and salads, color combinations, both very, very pretty. Um, so now the next thing we're gonna add to this, and we are almost done, our second salad. Uh, so, yep, you could totally use thawed frozen corn, that would work as well. Honestly, um, you might not even need to thaw it, just depends on how much, if there's a lot of ice crystals on it, uh, because you don't want it to water down the salad, but um, I, I don't tend to notice when I thaw frozen corn that there's a lot of moisture coming out of it. So you might be able to just throw it in there frozen. All right. So now I got a pepper jack cheese for this one. Uh, you don't like pepper jack, use Monterey Jack, use cheddar. Um, you could leave the cheese out altogether. I just really like cheese. Um, and for me, nutritional wise, Nutrition wise, I can't speak today. Uh, when it comes to cheese, yeah, cheese makes everything better. You're right. Um, I would much rather have a small amount of real cheese than a, um, a larger quantity of like a, an artificially reduced fat cheese, things like that. I just don't think they're as creamy. They don't taste as good. They're not satisfying. And the whole idea is we want this food to be delicious. I've always hated when you know, I hear people say, oh, that's pretty good for healthy food. No, it's either good or it's not good. So whether it's healthy for you or not, food is either it tastes good or it doesn't taste good. So uh, to me, it's really important that healthy food tastes good. We have got fiber and uh, phytonutrients and vitamins and healthy fats in here. We've got all kinds of protein. Um, we've got all kinds of stuff. So we're adding a little bit of, of a higher fat ingredient that tastes delicious. That's fine. Plus it's got calcium and more protein. Uh, tofu. Yeah, you could probably put tofu in here. Um, in place of cheese, do you mean? Or just, um, just in addition? Either way it would work. So for the full recipe, we want about five ounces of this. This is an eight ounce block. So we want a little more than half of this. Basically, we want an ounce of cheese per jar. So if I've got eight ounces, I've got four ounces, I've got two ounces. So we want about this much cheese. Let me change my mind. I may put a little bit more in. And again, this is one of those things. I want to get some cheese in as many bites as I can. So I want to get small cubes of this cheese. So we're going to make our sticks. And then we're gonna cut our sticks this way. All right, just like that. The only thing is the cheese is tough. When you try to put it in, it all clumps together. So I try to sprinkle it around there. All right, and our next ingredient is our salad part, our lettuce. 
Any other questions or comments? Let's see, Rago, here it is. And same thing, we want roughly um, a cup or so of the green in here. So I'm going to loosely put this in here. A fun addition to this to have in a separate container might be just a small amount, you know, a spoonful or so of like those little fried tortilla strips uh, just for some extra crunch. We don't have a ton of crunch in, uh, oops, in this one. All right, I think I'm gonna put a little bit more in here. Yeah, our lettuce is a little bit crunchy. There we go. All right, and now we take our lid. Yeah, the salsa and the yogurt, is it makes such a great dressing because typically um, when I'm talking about salad dressings, I always tell people get the oil-based ones. They're just much healthier uh, than the creamy-based ones. But if your cream part can be a non-fat plain yogurt, it's delicious. So that is our, our second salad. So again, remember, we want to turn it upside down, give it a good shake. Um, and we're good. And it's it's really weird how the lettuce just, again, as long as you store it the right way, does not get soggy. It stays nice and crispy and fresh. Uh, so these are pretty cool things. Like I said, whether you're going home, I mean, going to work, and you'll see this one is starting, the lettuce is sort of starts to compress itself and it will. So right now these are totally full. Um, but, you know, later on when I pop them in the fridge, the lettuce will probably compress a little bit, which is fine. Because what's that giving me? That's giving me my shake room. And, and I, think, I think a cup, a cup and a half of, of greens is fine uh, in here to make. I mean, a, a cup is basically a serving of vegetable, a cup of raw greens. Um, so it's fine to get a cup in there. You got a serving of veggie. And look, I mean, speaking of that, so the, I feel like for many Americans, it's the, the fruits and the veggies that we're lacking in, the recommendation for fruits and veggies is five to nine servings over the course of the day. I mean, these salads easily have two plus servings of fruits and veggies. Um, this one especially, this one has more than this one. Um, but I mean, you're getting two plus at one meal. So that's, you know, you're almost halfway to the minimum recommendation. But those are our two salads. So I wanted to make sure to see if we had any other questions or comments or ideas. Um, like I said, I feel like I threw in all kinds of ideas for, for alternative ingredients that you could use. But again, keep in mind, the benefit of cooking for yourself, cooking from home, either to eat at home or to bring to work is that you control, it's just that, you control all the ingredients. So if there's an ingredient I use today that you don't like, figure out some other thing to swap it out for. We talked about different protein swaps. We talked about different greens. We talked about different cheeses, different fruits. Um, so I feel like we really talked about uh, a bunch of different alternatives. So, oh, well, you know what? If we're, somebody mentioned they like the yogurt and the salsa idea. Another fun dressing. I wouldn't do it with either of these salads, um, but it would be good with like a chicken, chicken and cheese and greens, I'm trying to, uh, would be, if you like hot sauce, you could do the Greek yogurt, the plain Greek yogurt, and add like some sriracha or your favorite hot sauce to it, or like a Thai chili sauce, add that to it and make like an Asian sort of themed salad. So, so many different varieties, so many different ways to get uh, different flavors. So, and it's, it's so fun to open up the fridge and these sit in there. So, 